This is Private Matters. I am Max van Praak, your host. And here on this platform, we raise awareness about love, sex, and power. We are in a dungeon in, in Portland, very, very, uh, very wonderful place. And my guest today is Galen Foos, a psychologist, a sex educator, author. Welcome to the show. Oh, it's great to be here on Private Matters, Max. Uh, you are uh, a, a sex educator and, and an author, and uh, you, am I forgetting anything important? And a, a therapist who works with clients to support them in coming to terms with whatever their authentic sexuality is, and then untangle all the parts of them that resist expressing it in an honest way. In an honest way, yes, and in and, and a very broad range. We, we are here in a, in a dungeon space, right, surrounded by... All kind of uh, all kind of toys and, and and in a deeper sense, you know, the dungeon is a metaphor, and in the dungeon here are artifacts and symbolic totems and different things that resonate with things that already exist within someone's psyche, especially someone who's getting into kink or fetish. You know, all, all of this is just an array, and actually, this is a personal array, and every dungeon or ritual space should be personal. You know, people put in things that are meaningful to them. In this case, there's a lot of overlap, and there's going to be floggers and canes and cuffs and things, kind of the standard, you know, equipment and standard operating procedures. But there's still the important part, really, is your personal part that you're bringing to it that that's really meaningful to you personally, and whatever role or manifestation you, it might be authentic for you. Right, and it's not always so much about the the, the toys and and props. There there's there is people. Who, who play very intensely with others without using anything but their hands and their voice. Exactly. So, And it's the full pantheon, the full spectrum of what you're saying. So, you know, as you said, the props and the toys are part of a larger story that's going on, a mythic, erotic story that's coming from the personal unconscious that has driven this person to orgasm or other deep erotic states, and often cases since well before puberty, since seven, eight, or nine, these fantasies started coming to life in them, not based on some trauma or dysfunction in their environment, but just from my research and my working with people, this is just a common experience. Oh, when I was seven, when I was eight, people often tell me the origins of their erotic stories that they carry. And they carry them for life. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, and the way I, I know you, uh, there's a lot of people in the in the BDSM community who work at very different levels. Uh, what I appreciate very much uh, about you and why I wanted to interview you is uh, b because of your, your depth. And um, we have your, your, your book here um, that just came out not so long ago, right? Yeah. Decoding Your Kink, Guide to Explore, Share, and Enjoy Your Wildest Sexual Desires. Decoding your kink, which is not a computer or a geek kind of thing. No, it's more like uh, you know uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark or something. You know, you're looking for the code, the the you know the the search for the Holy Grail. This is these are mythic uh, stories that I, as I look at it, that people carry within them, and they are coming into a person from a culture that does not want them to look deeply at their sexuality. As a culture, we don't look deeply at our sexuality. We turn the lights down. We turn, avoid our eyes contacting. And after most people have sex, they turn the light out and go to bed. They don't say, wow, who was that that showed up? Even though that is when our erotic personas do show up, especially close to orgasm. That's when they really just embody and come into the altar of the person and they, the, what I'll call their sex creature takes over and enters, and it's a wild, fierce, different persona than their everyday one. You put a lot of effort into this book. Uh, uh, it's very, very strongly resourced by, by uh, psychological uh, works and has a lot of soulful, uh, uh, soulful parts to it. And I'll read a, a quote from the book. Uh, when, when love and kink are combined in an ongoing partnership, the complexity involved psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, and physically goes far beyond the realm of egalitarian relationships and vanilla sex. So uh, to define for people who don't know, 
uh, an egalitarian relationship is a relationship in, in which two people uh, consider themselves equals. Yes, and that, that's the standard operating procedure for American relationship style is egalitarian. Uh, and that's overlooking what's really going on in almost all relationships. There is a power dynamic in every relationship, and one is in the lead or not in, in ways more instinctively or naturally or politically, you know, in the fight, you know, fighting for those places, even though they're in this egalitarian relationship. So if, and at least if someone's not really well-versed in their own inner psyche and their shadows, this is where a lot of con- the DS side of vanilla relationships shows up in these kind of shadowy interactions. You know? v- vanilla is, is, is light. Uh, so the the more the more uh, conventional uh, non kinky way, and we need both light and dark. So actually, everybody should should know that everybody who is in a romantic relationship could realize that uh, that that you uh, to to have true passion, you need both light and dark. And 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 if there's dark missing, then they can come to you, or <laughs> or they can. Dig a little dark deep. is never missing. It just is in shadow. My point is to learn how to do engage it consciously so that it is uh, re- honestly represented. And then a balance between these two uh, energies of, of sacred and profane, light and dark. Uh, you know, this is the yin-yang of arrows are these uh, paradoxes that exist, you know, where we live in a monotheistic, or have been raised in a monotheistic culture where things are either black and white or good or evil you know it, it, there is no and but the reality is more that things are and so we are both primitive and we are civilized you know we still can contain the mammalian alpha beta you know puffing the chest and powering the voice you know as a method or we bow and look down and you know back down and and we're cold-blooded like reptiles and other sensibilities of how we attack or defend you know, turf. Again, these are coming from the unconscious, how we do that. So we say we're civilized and refined and gentlemen uh, operate this way and we have rules of war and all these things. But the truth is, you know, we're in a, a wash in brutality across the globe. And it's in the name of, you know, God or freedom or liberty. Uh, and we don't know the shadow. Don't address, acknowledge. The shadow. Well, it's all, all around us, but we don't name it. Sadomasochism is present in everyday life, in 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 our culture, with with, with the police and the court and the yeah. the rules and 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 and, and, and yes, and on and on and on. How we treat each other, it's it's there. It's this is about bringing consciousness to it, and and in the realm of dating and and, and romance. Uh, so I, I, because I, I, I know you uh, personally, you, 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 you are not on, on Match.com, you, you, and you have given a lot of thought also, it's also clear in your book, to how you express yourself and how you define yourself as a, as a, as a, a sexual person, as a, as a, as a dominant uh, man in, in, in this culture. You've given a lot of thought to that. Uh, yeah, and I think it is important to do the self-examinations, you know, because as a dominant, and uh, so that's my, how I identify, I say I'm a dominant erotic sadist, and with the emphasis on erotic, you know, I'm not a cold-blooded sadist, I, the point is eros, you know, I use that uh, techniques to like sweeten the pain, so to speak, to build eros in my partner, where they're in a negotiated consensual way with a safe word and ability to stop. But they can also open to those counterparts of them if they have them that I'm experiencing. It's really a dance between the two energies. And so dominance and submission is a dance between two sides of a coin that really build this amazing intimacy and ecstatic drive into deep territory of Eros that is allowed when you do that. And so when you meet a woman, you're not going to uh, pretend that you're somebody else. You're very direct with her about, uh, about who you are. You set up the, the situation in a, in a way knowing yourself, because if you spend a lot of time really understanding your own needs, which I think everybody should do, uh, no matter who you are, you, if to be fulfilled in a, in, a, in a marriage, you should really know what what's hot for you and what you need and want and the more you know that the quicker you can go you can say hey this is this is who i am and 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 this is uh, this is the only way it will work for me yeah once i decided to come out as a, a kink oriented man uh, in the particular manifestation of dominant erotic sadist as i said 
it got really clear to me then that there's no point in going out to a bar or to the gym or someplace in terms of hoping to meet someone because my criteria was so clear and specific it was going to be a waste of time to try to go through just meeting someone randomly and get to the because I would start right away with oh I'm into kink these are my uh, checklist of what I'm into and if check that out if there's a lot of common there and the other things I, I how I approach things in a conscious way and you want to communicate uh, let's start there but I lead and I think everybody should why waste time it's stupid to go six months dallying with someone and find out oh you're not into kink oh <laughs> Sorry, I, so ask it first is how I approach it. Well, I, I, I don't fully agree with you on that because I, I, I also uh, uh, have experienced uh, that, 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 that I've met people uh, in, a, in, a, in a different context who, who say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised you like this, you like that, right. because this, through the law of attraction, by focusing on something, you, you, you will have a stronger chemistry yeah. with, with somebody who is open to that. Yeah. And all, anything I say is personal to me. I'm not saying this is how everyone should do anything. I'm just saying that what I arrived at through getting honest about my sexuality was my process to, you know, kind of uh, date in the pond that, already others are are also seeking the same thing versus or, or was it is important important to you that somebody had experience that you that he that they they weren't somebody out of out of like a novice uh, never never played well the more i got experienced yeah my preference was that but then i had sometimes you meet someone and just their it seems so clear in their presentation that this is kind of a very innate natural part of them you know and this is the why uh it's important to examine and explore things in a more uh going into some depths because you're encountering parts of you that are already there it's not like you're create bringing parts in that weren't there you're simply resurrecting out of this the way they've been hidden to bring them to life and but get to express them you know, they are just, as I look at that, they're very distinct personas, you know, and these archetypal motifs of, you know, dominant submission, you know, dominant in a way is like the king or the queen archetype, you know, yes. that one can aspire. There's a very noble aspect to, to, to these uh, two sides. You know, I look at these two sides of the coin. DS is this noble aspect of relating between two, and the BDSM aspect is the shadowy, taboo, forbidden, inappropriate ways that you can learn to navigate once you build this noble container, which is your agreements, what you've negotiated, uh, what you understand is their desire, what you have a connection and build heart-to-heart -heart connection where you really are protecting this person ultimately and respecting their humanity. And, you know, you don't shouldn't engage into the BDSM side and still you've made that connection, be it for a play scene or a long-term relationship. First, connecting uh, on a human level and, and uh, acknowledging each other's dignity. Arranging that on the back end, too, you know, what they call aftercare uh, generally. But, I mean, it's important uh, for people to recognize the whole journey, you know. Start with the front-end negotiation where you do build rapport, connection, trust through clear negotiation and transparency and answering whatever questions, you know, oh, you said that, and but how does that fit with this so that you get as much clarity as you can then you can engage these deep uh taboo sexual energies and then you need to emerge from that in a way that's turning back full circle to bring about that connection of honoring and blessing and encouraging and, and celebrating each other for for taking that deep of a journey yes and and everybody has their own way on weaving these things in into their life and into yeah, their relationship that's, that's the important thing i really want to ask, emphasize there is no one way there's no bible of kink or dsb dsm there's no group or person or somebody who started way back when that we have this lineage and all that people should follow uh there's a lot of valuable things in those traditions and lineages and, and people who have been around a while do have a lot of good knowledge but for me ultimately find your own path you know and and be true to yourself and do that when you represent yourself to your partner and that's hard for us because we all have 
unresolved parts, shadowy parts were imperfect. So that's the other thing. There's no perfection in this. It's a journey, not a destination. The reason why uh, your message is important and uh, uh, is because in our culture, uh, uh, I, I see a lot of men uh, not being in touch with their power not being in touch with their power men are trying to please uh, the woman uh, the woman is oftentimes in control many women uh, take control as soon as they get into the relationship the man is trying to do the right thing he's trying to make her happy and he's not really in touch with the power and in the end the woman is disappointed and then the man and, and nobody is satisfied and yet when somebody is dominant like yourself and there's not a lot of men who are who are really in that place of of power and dominance uh the culture often rejects you uh it's 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 a dichotomy like that uh, it's it, uh, sometimes uh it triggers people people uh, uh, don't like it yes uh yeah that's a big question a lot of complexity uh involved in that uh, and I, I agree with a lot of the points that you made about you know men kind of stepping back from their edge uh, instead of holding the edge and that's really what i look at as uh, the power of the masculine is to hold their edge, you know, to be able to state clearly what their edge is and then uh, bend a bit but don't get pushed back if, the, if that is your edge, you know. So in other words, um, this is about the honorable warrior stance, you know. The honorable warrior defends and protects a boundary. The unhonorable, dishonorable warrior energy archetype invades you know that's the shadow warrior they cross the edge mm -hmm. and attack versus just you know being firm no that's my edge mm -hmm. uh, any questions you know just uh, make it clear and you know so that's that, again that's an ideal state that i'm stating you know there's no perfection in this and when someone is finding that they're not being able to hold their edge aren't able to stand up for themselves, aren't able to speak, aren't able to push back if they're getting pushed, uh, you know, they generally that means they've got a wound in some play, way that has, you know, the shadows of the king are the tyrant on the one hand and the weakling on the other. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when, when somebody's wounded in the king part of them, you know, or the warriors, the sadist and the masochist on those sides, but in back to the king is this, uh, tyrant or weakling. So, you know, a lot of people when they, oh, and this is true for men or women, the masculine and women or the, the feminine and men, all these things are, are deep inner states. So there, there isn't solely about that, you know. So again, the masculine is personal, you know. Uh, each, what I want to support people in, men or women, is to find what's their personal truths. Cause what, what, what's what's true for them? And like want to run and the show and great. And then find someone who... Sure is looking for that and then then you got a great matchup that's why kink and ds bdsm has been so great because people don't have to say we're equal when really oh, i prefer if you were doing this and uh, like that maybe people in vanilla sides do get to those kind of communications and, and do work that out but it's much more straightforward in a kink ds bdsm because you're negotiating these parts uh, what about being too fixated in, in in your role in other words you have uh, uh, you have made clear to a woman you you're interested in what your terms are. This is this is how I want to start. I want to take you to the dungeon, and uh, I, I'd like to uh, to 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 guide and and lead, and uh, we're going to go into power play. And you really like this woman, yeah. and then she says, "No, sorry, that's not for me." Uh, don't you don't you want to then compromise? Is, uh, will you do? Do you want to come back and say, well, uh, maybe it's not so important to me? Or how do you deal with that? Well, I think everything needs flexibility. You know, if you have a rigid, you know, this is. I mean, until you get to the absolute hard edge that yeah. you need to have, you know, you need to know your bottom line edge. And then, but there's so much complexity in a relationship that there's a lot of factors that. Yeah, well, that's everything else is so compelling. Yeah, I can yield this uh, dominant twenty four seven kind of posture, uh, and and frankly, no few people can maintain a twenty four seven dominant posture. You know, it's fatigue. You'll run out of 
juice, you know, it's fatiguing. Uh, and so how I look at it in, in relationship is you, comp, you negotiate a range of protocol as I look at it. So like, yeah, I'm not a micromanager. I don't want to be engaged constantly in every little detail of someone's life and that. I, I like someone's kind of more autonomous and can operate on their own. And then uh, so we might have high protocol X number, you know, like a one weekend a month is totally high protocol, you know, everything as is, you know, the I've stated and precise and et cetera, which is, can be a very compelling state to get into. And then the rest of the time, it's pretty much, you know, just respectful uh, connection and, and doing what life requires to get done. But uh, to, to come back to my question, what if somebody is uh, I um, intimidated by the idea of, of jumping right into mm. power play and not going for dinner a couple of times first? Yeah. Then you just want to move on, I think. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's really about, again, personal choice, personal connection. Oh, this person's really interesting for some reason, and they're not seemingly so kinky now, yeah. uh, and I'm willing to explore this a little more. So, and especially even if someone is, you know, totally aligned with one's kink side, uh, it still is about pace. You know, these things are best kind of, uh, move through a re on a relationship side and also the uh, sexual exploration, you know, at a pace that is allowing things to unfold and develop and not moving too quick, but not moving too slow either. The, it's, again, there's no precise thing about what pace is, but what two well, people decide on it. And, and, and so there's a, there's a big part of tuning into who's on the other side to know what's the right dosage in the, in the beginning. And this is why uh, a lot, I'm glad we got to this point because we haven't brought it in yet. This is the level where the concepts uh, of embodiment, presence, uh, vulnerability, being able to speak about the tough questions or issues, you know, or expose parts. Because if you go down this path of DSBDSM, which is an empowering path, which is, you know, liberating these wild, uh, fierce, uh, mythic stories uh, of all uh, these pantheons of ways that they show up. Uh, it takes power and it is empowering. You have to be in your power to step in there confidently on either side of the coin. And everyone's almost going to run into the parts of them that fully haven't fully resolved. Oh, I'm a dominant. Suddenly, boom, I'm going to be hit with a meet a partner who's just snapping my, uh, you know, dominance right away from me and I'm suddenly, you know, I'm not, so that means that, oh, I need, I want to look at that, what, you know, my intention is to, and I know who I am, uh, but I'm not, I'm not showing up, what's that about? So good, I'm look. I'm getting to look at something in myself that's, it really is going to be like a landmine if I don't address it. Yeah. It's going to keep coming up. So this is an opportunity, this path is an opportunity to look at all the unresolved parts of us that are going to fight, scream, be contrary to what our intention is. Because this is really, it is about intention based on your innate sensibility. Then you have to deal with all the parts that got kind of messed up. Uh, you say way. sensibility. As a man, we can be dominant and also highly sensitive. But those two can go together. I think mm -hmm. that's important to mention and for people to understand, for both men and women to understand yeah. that dominance uh, is uh, is not insensitive. It can be highly, highly sensitive and intuitive. And again, this brings us then to this idea of what I call paradox, you know, and I, I think we mentioned that a little bit ago about it, it's not an either or. So, and this is what I think a lot of people struggle with with their sexuality is, especially if they have a darker edge sexuality where they really want to get into some, you know, nasty, depraved level of SM or degradation or humiliation, uh, et cetera, which are all happen all the time. People go there all the time and do so in a healthy, conscious way and come out and they're fine. But most people, be, as they're peering in, you know, a lot of people are at the threshold of their sexual authenticity. It's like a wilderness area out there. And they are been told, oh, don't go out there. All the boogeymen are out there. Or you'll get, there's wild things out there that'll kill you. It's not safe. You'll never come back. Uh, and so people are, that ends enough to intimidate one who even though their authentic sexuality goes no that's where i, I want to go uh so to enter 
they're blocked by because they're told, oh, good girls don't do that, or you're going to go to hell, or what will my parents yeah, da- think? Dangerous. Or yeah, it's dangerous. You're going to get ruined. You'll ruin your life. You'll you'll be dead. You'll get a disease. Someone will pillage you and quarter you, and all of the darkest. We project because we don't examine sexuality consciously. This is what the culture has projected onto the wilderness of Eros. Don't go out there for all those scary reasons. So people have to face and confront this paradox of, and go, yes, I am that nasty. I am that depraved. I am that perverted. Part My sexuality is anyway. And I'm also, yeah, I go to the PTA. I go to church on Sunday. I'm a member of my community. What's group. the PTA? Parent Teachers Association. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I did my time there as a, when my two sons were being raised. So, uh, so the truth is, yeah, we're, we are both of these parts, you know. And in terms of my sexuality, I mean, I, I'm a total romantic. I'm a big teddy bear. I love, you know, sweetness and cuddling and holding hands and, you know, being totally romantic. And, and I like this very dark-edged, you know, uh, harsh, you know, level of intensity you know taking down my partner. cult also there's a cult part uh yeah in the sense of you know kind of i saw a great example of it in the mel gibson's mayan movie uh which i forget the name of can't think of it right now but one of the characters in there was this total uh thing where he would just like look at you while he's tormenting or torture you and just say oh that's kind of like oh that's interesting you know the response that someone's uh, reaction, you know. So yeah, I can carry. Yeah, I have the full pantheon of yeah, that whole different. dark mm-hmm. uh, side, and uh, but it's grounded in this, centered in this place where above all, do no harm. It's like the Hippocratic oath applies to dominance and submission too. You know, like I am present with my partner whenever I'm engaging in those things. So I'm. She'll tell me. Even if she doesn't speak, her body will reflect uh, the, where she's at, her, her contact, her sense of contact with me. If I feel like, whoa, she just left the, the building, you know, that's when I stop, check in, say, oh, I just want to see if we're still connected here. And if not, then, okay, let's, everything stops and we, what do you need right now? Absolutely. This is very, very important work. Yes. And I thank you for, for, for all of what you, what you've done and for coming on my platform. Um, it's very, it's very important. And for everybody out there, if you're not satisfied in your relationship, uh, don't give up, keep, do, keep looking deeper, keep looking deeper, ask yourself, uh, who you are, what do you want? What's hot for you? What do you need? What, what didn't work about past relationships? Take some risks. And it's a rich and fascinating journey. I totally agree. Well stated. (laughs) Thanks. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And this was Private Matters. And we'll be back with more uh, other guests and, 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 and other topics where raise awareness about sex, love, and power.